Hello everyone, William here. I just had another great conversation with another guest. Would you like to come in and listen in on the conversation we had? By the way, feel free to share it with anyone you feel may find it of interest. Come on, let's go listen in now. Michael Baldessero, welcome to my studio. Thank you. Thanks for coming out and uh, responding to my invitation. I right. really appreciate right. the right. opportunity to sit and uh, talk to you about your candidacy for mayor. Yeah, thanks for your forum too. Yeah, thank you. Uh, what prompted you to run, Michael? Well, in 1984, I got out of jail for selling. I actually wasn't selling marijuana. I was picking up a quarter ounce for the mission, for a couple of people and myself at the mission. And uh, the fellow I was with, I took him to get some, and he had a pound. He was buying a pound. Well, I wanted a quarter, $25 worth, right? Well, I get pulled over. Uh, the biggest marijuana bust in the city of Hamilton, 1984. This, well, it was actually 1980. It took to 84 to get me to trial, and then they gave me six months, and I, the Court of Appeal let me out on bail after seven weeks. My dad put up a hundred bucks cash, and they threw me out. I was at uh, Maplehurst, and it's now a, a super jail. And um, when I got out, God sort of told me, you know, two things. One, grow your beard and let it grow and run for something. And the federal election was on, so I ran ag against, I guess, what well, was the dentist, uh, Mar 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 Marcini, uh, whatever. And uh, I, I argued a bit with Sheila Copps on the stage as well, in downtown, and I got addicted. To, I, I like to argue, I like debating, so. And uh, I thought it'd make a difference. I thought, if I'd ran, and then the next election came up in 85, was for mayor, so I thought, well, why not? <laughs> it was just me and Robert Morrow. If I hadn't ran, he would have been acclaimed. So I'm, I'm glad, uh, I'm very happy that he was Just someone to compete with. Well, I didn't think he deserved, number one, to be acclaimed. I had no voice at City Hall. Mm -hmm. Like, I smoke marijuana, <coughs> so what? I look at all the damage being done by alcohol, and, and here they are throwing me in a, a jail with criminals, with people that might have raped your sister last night, because I smoked and I was, I admitted, we had an agreed upon statement of facts that what I was doing was for the church, that I'm a minister of the church, all that stuff went down. Just as Borkovich, Borkovich ruled that freedom of religion was not a, a defense to trafficking in marijuana. Driving it is trafficking. To move, to sell, buy, barter, move, trade, is trafficking. And I was driving down the road and I admitted, of course, why wouldn't I? I wouldn't be doing it if I was ashamed of it. It's pretty silly because, and, and then, if we talk a little more about the marijuana issue, is that when I was sentenced on another trial later by Justice Shime, he got angry at me. He said, I'm sentencing you, you better watch what you're saying to me. And what I was saying was, they had me, I sold to this undercover narc four times. I said, like the first time I, I, I commit, committed an offense, I should have been arrested and taken away. But no, no, they make it look like I'm a real bad guy. Four times I sold pot. I says to him, well, if I was a rapist, would you send a lady in four times just to make me look like a really bad rapist? Oh, he got it. He was angry. <laughs> but isn't that the truth? The law says and the criminal code says when an officer sees a crime, he must act and do something. Not to goad you on to make you look like some kind of a monster when it's only marijuana. If anything, they, the, the alcohol, the damage it's done to our society is phenomenal. That's another one. So I had a hope that maybe somebody would listen. That's not true. They don't. So I keep running, and over the years there's many issues. I wasn't born in a vacuum. My father built the Kenilworth Access. Oh, yes. I helped him build the entire west campus of McMaster University, a bridge over the highway, the 102, and the whole eastern side that goes down the, that highway. Helped him build that, plus many of the subdivisions in Hamilton, Stony Creek, Ancaster, Dundas, Flamborough. I've been all over hauling heavy equipment for my father putting in water mains, roads, and sewers. So I understand that. I'm an operating engineer. It's, sure. And when it comes to court, I've, I've sued Cadillac Fairview and, and won. They had to, to uh, agree just to, get to, to, to pay us off. And, but <laughs> the only reason we didn't get to go to court 
was the judges really didn't want us to come back. We had just overturned Justice Shime on a point of law. The Court of Appeal gave Reverend Tucker and I $6,000 and ordered a new trial because we wanted a trial. It wasn't about money. The thing is, I had the Southern Marijuana trial coming up for trafficking to an undercover cop again who joined the church to buy $20 worth over and over again, right? Not just once and here we come. No, no. So, I know what I'm talking about. When mm -hmm. I walk into a court of law, I'm capable of going all the way to Ottawa. And the city of Hamilton has some legal, dis legal problems, which the counselors, nobody really is, is, is capable of handling because they've never been in a darn courtroom. Right. I noticed in uh, 1989, I believe it was, that you had a decision overturned when it came to the Iberwind Stadium and the Tiger Cats. Yeah, yeah, we did. We <coughs> that was an illegal deal with Bob Morrow and uh, the city council, some the majority of them anyway. And uh, we saved the city about five hundred and some thousand dollars, probably between three hundred and fifty thousand, probably to maybe as much as eight, nine hundred thousand dollars, because they were giving the the stadium to the to Harold Ballard's. The guy who was buying it, Mr. Do uh, you remember his name? Bailey or? Yeah, Mr. Bailey. They were going to give him three years for a dollar a year for the stadium, plus all the concessions and everything that they, they like, why? <laughs> they, they, the Tiger Cats aren't a charity and those guys are good guys. They're hard playing. That's one heck of a sport. Mm -hmm. One of the fellows, I said, what's it like playing football? He said, it's like being in three car crashes in one day every game. <laughs> I'm sure. Just hitting as hard as you can mm -hmm. and that well, that's my favorite sport because it's, I guess women don't play that kind of, they, that, I've never seen a woman built like some of those linebackers and maybe there are, eh? <laughs> but it, uh, you just don't see it. Yeah. yeah. I noticed that you're uh, quite busy and active in the community and a lot of people uh, do have conversations with you. And I was just wondering what uh, are some of the issues that you're hearing on the street uh, well, about um, our uh, city? Things like the gas plant. Things like the mayor's secretary making a hundred plus thousand dollars a year. Like this isn't happening in the private sector. Most people are hurting, and when they look at our government, it's like they live in the Taj Mahal. They have benefits, benefits, and benefits. And when I see what's going on in the street, we can't afford the roads to fix. We can't afford policing because, like, crime has gone nuts. And if they're not shooting you nowadays, they're stabbing you, beating up little old ladies. This isn't getting better. When I was a child, we didn't have super jails. In fact, Barton Street Jail was very small. And I never, could never imagine if, in my, that, that we'd be in such a mess. And it's growing. Super jails are getting even bigger. It would be super duper jails by the time, I say my child is maybe my age. He's maybe 38 right now. This is a sickening. And he's raising another child. He actually works in a a federal penitentiary. He's a prison guard. Oh. And thank God for some good guards because I've spent three years in jail over pot and I've been in there with all kinds of people. They're not all bad. Some of, the, some of them even aren't even guilty. And they just throw everybody in the same jail with the guy with, you know, with the, the most violent offenders or people charged with the most violent offenses. And they expect you to, like when a soldier goes to Iraq, he has that uh, disorder from being abused and tortured. Well, it happens in jails. You take an ordinary guy and throw him in there for six months to a year because he doesn't know anybody, can't get any bail. And he, I said, it happened. I watched the kid. He did a year. He got out in the jury. The jury found him not guilty. He shot a guy dead at the YMCA, this guy that kept on threatening him and bugging him and pushing him around. One day he went in with a gun to defend himself. The guy came on to him and he just blew him away. <laughs> I watched him for a year because I was there. I was in that jail three times in that year. Oh, okay. I come back six months later and he's still there. The day he went to trial, I wished him good luck. This was a quiet kid next door in protective custody, what they call PC. Found him not guilty. It was reasonable what he did. Stupid bullies. Defending himself. At the were. YMCA in the bathroom yeah. from a big bully. <laughs> but he spent a year in jail as an innocent guy. Nothing wrong with this man. Very beautiful person, not violent at all. Mm -hmm. In Florida, little old ladies, they're allowed to carry guns and they're allowed to shoot people that threaten them. You're not allowed, you shouldn't be threatened by anybody. And where are the police when that happens? They're always there after the fact to serve and protect 
I don't see them doing that. So far, it's been protecting their pensions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, don't get me, I'm not down on anybody, the police, the army, or anybody at all. Because, well, even Trudeau, he feels that people that are in jail are there because society failed them. And in many ways, that's why they are in jail. We've turned crime into a business. The lawyers are rich. The, the jail guards, the judges. For what? We got to stop these people from creating crimes, and the, the, the starting point is alcohol. If we raise, lower the voting age, so that you could vote for your children until your children said, "Hey, man, I want, I want my vote." Maybe seven years old. So what? Think adults don't seem to make a better choice. Look at the governments we got now. I know some people really love Stephen Harper, but some people is always going to love the other guy no matter what. So. Sure. The majority of who you like best, then there should be a means test for politicians. There's a mean test for just, I can't, I'm a heavy equipment operator, I have a license. Shouldn't I? And I'm not just talking about political science. It takes a hell of a lot more than that to run a city. You've got to know about roads, you've got to know about the law, you've got to know about all kinds of stuff. And you have to be able to work, work with people. So far, it's just been a popularity test, and look what we got. Mm -hmm. They look after their friends, the guy gets in, he appoints uh, the, the uh, justice of the peace, the guy who helped him with his campaign, of course. It's no wonder it's, uh, the, uh, these people have a gravy boat happening. And, and the mayor, and the people that lead our country, in my opinion, they, sh they should be putting things on the ballot for us to decide. Not just, oh, we're so popular, we have a majority, we'll just do what the hell we want. And that's what we got, and that's why we have deficits. We can't even keep up with, with the interest on the debt, for crying out loud. A deficit? We're trying to break even. Well, what about the debt? Mm -hmm. When Trudeau took office, Pierre, we didn't have a national debt back in the 60s. So, there's definitely something wrong. If people stopped voting for parties and started voting for independence, somebody maybe you actually know in the neighborhood that if he's gearing you around, you can at least go knock on his door and mm -hmm. have, a, have a, a talk or see him. But no, no, with these guys, you don't see them. And when you do, they're surrounded with bodyguards, for crying so, out loud. Speaking of that, I noticed that uh, you had spoken about austerity in one of your articles and that you would be willing to cut your salary by a third. Um, and uh, why would you find that important? Well, I'm going to lead the way. <laughs> Somebody's got to cut something. And I... I know I'm living on a heck of a lot less than, than what the mayor's getting now, and I could probably even do really good on a third of what, what he's making. But by cutting a third, I, hopefully other people might take the hint and do the same thing. Follow the example? And sure, and I'm talking about everybody. I'm talking about not just union guys. I'm talking about everybody who works. Like, everybody needs to, be, to, to have a, a fair wage and not ridiculousness and there shouldn't be strikes. It's got to be something better than the way we're, we're, we're doing things and that's what leadership should be about is making things work without all this arguing and going nowhere and well we won't pick up the garbage for six months because we're not getting enough money. Well those guys work pretty hard, don't get me wrong, I'm just using them as, a, and as one example. Or the police if they went on strike tomorrow, now what do you do? Yeah. And, and, and I'm glad to see they're getting rid of this. We'll pay you if you, if you violate the law. We'll just keep paying you forever. The dental plans are a little too high. Like they put fluoride in the water because the poor people can't afford dentists. Well, <laughs> so they poison everybody with fluoride. That's not a good thing to put in the water. It's, it's, a, it's a byproduct of aluminum waste where they create aluminum. Hmm. So why don't we just fix their teeth? <laughs> right? True enough. Why do we look after people? How yes. come we have to wait for a day just to get into the hospital or maybe overnight sitting there because we don't have the doctors yet? Everybody's driving Porsches. The hospitals that you've been to the general it looks like a Taj Mahal for a hospital. I see no, no, no austerity at all when it comes to making their, their world wonderful. But when it, for us, no, when I, I had a heart attack and I'm telling you those people really really do a good job, eh? They had me in and fixed up right away. That's great, but there's a whole waiting room full of people that, that should have the, almost the same kind of service. I, I just don't understand. And for instance, schooling, we should be paying people to go to school. 
we should look after them till they get out of school, then we can take money that they owe for going to school, like pay their rent, give them so much money for food, whatever, you gotta look after them and their children. Instead we send them to university and they turn into a bunch of drunks because they got a bar on campus. They drink themselves to death. They're so stupid. Like what the heck? This is these are the doctors and the engineers of tomorrow and they don't they, they, they drink so much alcohol they die from it? What the hell is wrong with where is, is anybody paying any attention? What are the professors doing? They make a lot of money too. And they don't seem to be turning out the goods, so they need us a big boot. I got big boots. <laughs> So with all these things apparently broken, what yeah. would be the first thing that you would uh, want to fix if you became the successful candidate, uh, successful mayor? Yeah, well, the first thing I'd have to do is find a way to, to, to communicate with city council. Because you really can't do very much unless you have people behind you. And I think they pretty well feel the same way I do, that it, it's time to start tightening our belts, it's time to start cutting back, it's time to start looking after everybody and finding a new way because this doesn't work. Our nine, I would say about 80% of our government right now is living off of tax dollars. If it isn't the hospital, which is all OEP and all government money, just about every job, including justice, is all being paid for by taxes now. And who's paying for that? The little guy, the private guy, the, the businessman. who, And they're just getting to be fewer of them every day. It's turning into large businesses and they get tax breaks just for existing because there's so many connections. We've got to break the connections. The only way to do that is to vote for little people. Don't we keep deciding amongst three parties. Tommy Douglas, uh, he said that the mice have to vote for mice, no longer the big fat cats. Until we start voting for people like ourselves. And you're just changing from one black cat to the white cats. And then to the spotted cats, that would be the NDP. They're all cats, we're mice, they eat mice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not, we're not in their best interest. Pick the guy next door, maybe somebody who knows what it's like to wait for two days to get into the hospital, to get the, the cheap medicine because he ha he's on welfare or he's on a disability. He has to be treated like a second-hand person. And, and the people that are driving to work, they can hardly afford their, their families or their houses because mm -hmm. it's getting, it's not that they need more money. Things have to be somehow leveled off and it's going to happen whether people like it or not. Because we, you know, pride goeth before a fall. So I hate to say I'm a real proud Canadian. What I am is scared, and I'd like to back my army. Because I'll tell you something. If you think the army is going to come on and point guns at us and tell us what to do, like they do in some countries, they're our only defense. <laughs> because they get on the side of the people, and they don't care about the damn government. Because we all know the United States is allowed to take up arms against their government. That's the rule. That's why they have guns. But we're Canadians. We, we, all we can do is hope and pray. And I'm not against that, but my God, we're glorifying a rock stars with statues. What about the guys that fought in Afghanistan and other places for us? And people that have died. Why don't we pick a hero out of that? Why don't we start sending these kids, giving them the army and and train them to be human beings and how to get along instead of joining street gangs and stealing. We had a drug problem in the city that's uh, that, uh, unfathomable. I just don't understand how many, so many people, if they're not addicted to Oxycontins or uh, crack or anything that they, and it all starts with alcohol. You don't smoke a joint of marijuana and say, where's the crack? But when you're drunk, you're sitting in the bar and the girl says, well, I got some crack here, you know. Uh, you come and smoke it with me. Well, you're already impaired. You're already in a stupor. You're liable to do anything. We got to stop that. Mm -hmm. We got to stop. You can't sell. You can't advertise tobacco yet. I watch Channel 11 News, and they're teaching our children on the news how to make a drink for every season. Oh, well, it's Christmas, so I make this kind of drink. Easter, we'll do these kind of drinks. And when the kid turns 19, his rite of passage is what to be a, a drunk, to be a, old enough to, to to poison himself with alcohol. I'd rather give him a vote whenever he wants it. And then we're going to have an argument at the table. Dad's a liberal, mom's a conservative, and the little, little, little monster wants to be NDP, right? Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a decent, that's decent. That, that leads to something good. And then maybe they'll look at maybe this independent guy over here. He's actually saying something because we keep changing spots to white to black and, 
it just gets worse and the, the debts get bigger. We're not, we're spinning our wheels and we're going nowhere and we have no choices. Mm -hmm. There so, might be one or two independents in Ottawa. That's about it. There should mm -hmm. be 99% independents and maybe one liberal, one conservative, and one NDP, and then we get somewhere. Yeah. So how important do you feel it is to communicate with the young people in the community, our youth in the community? <laughs> Well, 90% of them in Barton Street Jail are alcohol fe fetal syndrome children. So what am I com communicating with the rest are afraid of the bullies mm. and they want more police? I don't know. I We're not teaching them properly anyway, as far as I'm concerned. I went through the school thing. I learned more about Columbus than I did anything about, I didn't ever hear about Louis Riel in school. Mm. It was Christopher Columbus. Then I found out CBC told me all he did was run around raping Indians. Raping Indian women for crying. This guy's a hero. Mm -hmm. We've even given him a day. That's kind of weird, eh? What yeah. we should be doing is putting him on the, the uh, dangerous offender <coughs> list. That's mm -hmm. where Christopher Columbus belongs. He, he thought he was in India. He didn't even know he was in America, <laughs> so he called them the Natives Indians. <laughs> One insult after the other. God will get them all. God yeah. wanted the hopefully, <laughs> and I'm not picking any particular God, because <laughs> there's you know, there's so many. Even when you look at Jesus, there's this way to the Lord and then that way to the Lord. Everybody's, for crying out loud, if we spent so much time worrying about the planet and fixing it than worrying about who created it, we'd be far, far better ahead because it doesn't matter. God is God. Mm -hmm. The rest is just an excuse mm -hmm. for, for, for destroying things, I think. Yeah. So, in closing, what would you like the community to know about you and your... Um your platform when it comes to being mayor? Uh, well, just that I know I can do the job, but I need to be given an opportunity to do the job. I know I wear leathers, but <laughs> so did the people that opened up this country. Leather's the best thing you could wear as far as clothes go. Pay a little bit more, but you're not changing your pants every two or three years because they've got holes in them and stuff like that. And, uh, I'm different, yes. And it's going to take some getting used to, I suppose. I've got a beard, but if you go to City Hall and you look at, at the pictures of the old mayors, I, this isn't a very big beard compared to what these guys are supporting. Sure. And why they're, you know why, why the beards disappeared? It's real simple. Mustard gas in World War I. It was invented. Couldn't put a mask on. Uh -huh. <laughs> go out there and kill the enemy, right? They, uh, Reverend Tucker's father came out of World War I as a stretcher bearer. He got gassed and he went blind. And he went back in the WW2 and, uh, as a stretcher bearer. So he saw a lot of pain. He went on to being our Minister of Veteran Affairs for the Government of Canada. He was uh, leader of the opposition to Tommy Douglas when Tommy Douglas was the uh, government of Saskatchewan. <laughs> Retired him as a judge, eh? So, and what did he get out of all that? If it wasn't for guys like him, then this is an army guy. Where would we be speaking German today? Zig Heil or mm -hmm. <laughs> what's with these guys that want to take over the world? We've got to stop this nonsense. But, you know, everything begins at home. And I look at our backyard. We don't have any chickens. When, when I was a kid, we had chickens in some of the backyards. That meant eggs you could eat. We're, we're not pre prepared at all for a disaster. The hydro goes out. Everybody's dead. Because, number one, if it's the winter, your pipes are freezing. You better drain that whole house of yours, and you better know how to do it. There's no mm -hmm. preparedness for tomorrow, and then that's why I'm running. And I think people that feel the way I do, I don't think it's so much out of fear. It's more out of, like the scouts said, be prepared. Mm -hmm. Prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And we're not preparing. We mm -hmm. don't have anything put aside. All we have is debt and interest that... I mean, <laughs> that interest, can you imagine what we'd be doing today if we were li didn't have to give that, the interest to the, the people we borrowed it from? Some countries are actually throwing the banks out of their country. And I think it's time we told the Royal Bank to go packing back to England where they came from. Because this whole money thing, you give them one dollar, they're allowed to, pe to create nine dollars on that one dollar. It mm -hmm. doesn't even exist, mm -hmm. for crying out loud. Who the... <laughs> They really think we're stupid, eh? Maybe mm -hmm. that's why they call us plebeians. Now, a plebeian is just a commoner. Common folks. So that's why we have plebiscites. To give the common folk a feeling that maybe they have a say. Of course, all the big money goes into lobbyists and, 
and we'll put up lots of signs and we'll get you to vote this way and that way. So people really have to start paying attention. And I'm hoping that as, as being a mayor, I can bring that to the table, not just for children. Like you give them the right to vote, or at least the parents the right to vote for the baby. Because that's a human being. It's affected by law, by uh, the Children's Aid Society and all the laws that protect it under the criminal code. You have to supply uh, life to that child. You can't deprive it. That's a criminal offense. Well, that child is in the law, yet it, the parent has no say. I think the, if every child you have, you have a vote, and the kid gets old enough, they're going to want that vote. And instead of pretending to vote in schools, some of the kids might actually get interested, and geez, I can actually vote in the real election, and actually start having classes. And maybe that way we'll have some people better apt to run the government and the children with a better understanding of who they should vote for and what kind of things they want. Because they're not just playing a little game. Sure. We'll vote for the class president. That's cool. And I, I, every election we have, you know, after we have a debate at a school, they'll have a little vote to see later which one of our, the candidates. That, I've been picked the odd time <laughs> <laughs> to be the mayor by the kids, and that was a while back. So, <laughs> yeah, so you've had experience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> To some degree. Yeah, I've been the mayor of a couple of little schools around oh, town. Oh, very good. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> well, Michael, I have to tell you, it's been a pleasure uh, sitting and getting an opportunity to have a conversation with you and Likewise. getting to know you. I uh, really do look forward to uh, you coming back in and having another conversation with me. Bless you, I appreciate brother. you coming out. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Join us. Catch the bug.